observed everything with extreme tranquility. I saw these men going back and forth, always the same faces, always the same movements. Often, it seemed to me that there was only one man on board. A lofty purpose dawned on me. No one promised me that if I could become like them, the cage would be removed. Well, and these men in themselves were nothing which attracted me very much. But I did observe them for a long time, actually. The accumulation of observations pushed me in the right direction. And it was so easy to imitate these people. difficulty with alcohol. Yes, the smell was torture to me. <laughs> but I forced myself with all my power until I could overcome this reaction. Curiously enough, the people took this inner struggle more seriously than anything else about me. I don't distinguish the people, but there was one man who always came back day and night at very different times. He used to stand in front of me with a bottle of alcohol and gave me instructions. Monkey, 
This will grow hair on your chest. Watch me. Monkey, watch me. Seize. Shana. <laughs> Bloody monkey. I must confess that I used to look at him with wildly over-eager attentiveness. After he'd uncorked the bottle, he would raise it to his lips. Oh, I would gaze at him, and he would nod, please with me, and splash the liquid down his throat. Delighted with my gradual understanding, I would squeal and scratch myself all over, whatever it was convenient. He was happy. Impatient and desperate to imitate him, I would defecate over my cage. But that again gave him great satisfaction. <sighs> Monkey, did you shit yourself? Watch. Mm. Mm. Shana. With so much great effort, I could no longer follow him, and I would hang weakly onto the bars of the cage while he ended the theoretical lesson by rubbing his belly and grinning. Now, the practical exercises begun. Like an artist, 
I did forget to rub my belly and to grin. But instead of that, because I couldn't do anything else, because I had to, because my senses were roaring, I cried out, a short and good. for a way out. There's no other reason. And at least when I was handed over in Hamburg to my first teacher, I soon realized the two options open to me. The zoological garden or the musical. Well, the zoological garden, it's only a new bark cage. If you go there, you're lost. I didn't hesitate. I said to myself, use all your energy, girl, to get into the music hall. That is your way out. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I will show you just a little bit of an old, old act. Can I have some music, please? <coughs>
my way out. And I've learned, ladies and gentlemen, at last one learns when one has to learn. One learns when one needs a way out. One learns at all costs. Finally, my ape nature ran off, head over heels out of me, so that in the process, my first teacher himself almost became an ape. He had to give up teaching, and he was carried off to a mental hospital. Well, when I went through many teachers, actually, when I became more confident of my abilities, I start selecting teachers myself. Let them sit down in five interconnected rooms and studied with them all simultaneously by constantly leaping from one room into another. Yeah. <laughs>